Welcome to Workout Wednesday, week 34. Uh, this week we're going to be using calculation groups to create the visualization you see here. Uh, we'll be creating month to date, quarter to date, and year to date views, uh, as well as the ability to select different measures. Not only selecting the measures, but as you can see, the format of the measures will change as well. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is go to Get Data, go to More. Go to data.world. Go to Nerdy with Data as the owner. That's my account. And then the data set ID is sample store. We're going to pull the order table data set. Let's go ahead and go to transform data. I'm going to use uh, for the month to date, quarter to date, and year to date calculations, uh, a simple date calculation. So for the sake of just this example, let's filter out a few things. Let's look at just this year. Let's also look at Anything before the 24th. Now you can come up with more clever ways to dynamically select dates. Um, for this example, I'm focused more on calculation groups. So let's go ahead and filter that. Um, and let's close and apply. Now you can see that we have our data ready to go. Let's go ahead and download Tabular Editor. Uh, because this challenge requires a download, uh, if you're not able to download Tabular Editor on your machine, just go ahead and download my data model, uh, which I'll be linking to within the blog post. Then you can go ahead and at least start from the data model and uh, be able to do some of the challenge, um, you know, even though you don't have the ability to download Tabular Editor. Um, but to download Tabular Editor, you just click, click Download from the GitHub page, which I've linked to in the blog post. Give it a download. Hopefully uh, it won't take too long. So I'd like to just go through this process with you. Set up for everyone. Avoid some shortcuts, and we're going to install. Once it has installed, what we actually want to do is open up a new instance. RBI or reopen a file that you've been using. Go to external tools and you'll see tabular editor here. If you click tabular editor, you're now going to be able to go in tabular editor. Let's go ahead and open up tabular editor. First thing that we're going to do is create our month to date, quarter to date, year to date calculation group. So what we'll do is, within the tables, create a calculation group. This calculation group, we're going to call this time intelligence. And really what we're doing here is we're going to be setting different ways to calculate measures based on uh, what we add in our calculation items here. So here we're going to have MTD. We're going to have QTD. have YT. And the way the calculation groups work, let's say that we were going to make a calculation here, function here, and let's calculate um, selected measure. This is uh, selected measure is going to be the measure by which we're applying this calculation group. Um, so this works for any measure, and I'll show you that uh, kind of as an example here soon, but we're going to do selected measure. And then we just are going to apply a filter in here. We're going to do dates, MTD, or orders, uh, order date field, tabular field. Um, sometimes it helps to write this DAX actually as a formula in Power BI and then bring it in here uh, before uh, the calculation is, is going to work and is valid. 
Um, but here, it's basically the same as calculation, uh, how you would create this index in Power BI. It would calculate, of, say, sum of sales over dates, MTD, order date. And here, right, the only thing we're going to change is date MTD to QTD and YTD to YTD. Okay, we're going to hit save. It's going to pop a little window open here that says one or more calculation groups need to be manually refreshed. We're going to refresh that. You can see now we have time intelligence name. Let's go ahead and select the name for time intelligence. You can see that uh, it's actually a labeled name. Let's actually go back to tabular editor quickly. Instead of name, I would like to call this time period. So instead of name, I call this time period. Save that. Now you can see it's called time period. So time period is MTD, QTT, and YTD. It needs a measure because remember it said that based on the selected measure, it's going to calculate differently based off the selection of the calculator calculation item. So we're going to go ahead and create a new measure. I'm just going to call this. Um, Let's just call this the sum of sales. Call that total sales. Here you can see, if we pull that in there, we actually have sales for MTD, QTD, and YTD. Same thing could have happened here if I created a new measure and I did it for, uh, let's say I did it for profit, let's say total profit. equal to the sum of the profits column. Let's pull that in here as well. You can see that it's done the same for profit. This thing that we're going to do is actually create a dynamic selection of a metric uh, based on a calculation group. Uh, and with that, we'll actually come along with custom formatting for each metric. It's a really easy way to do it. I really like the, the way that it works with calculation groups. So let's go ahead and add these through tabular editor. First thing that we want to do again is go to tables. We're going to create a new calculation group. I'm going to call this, uh, let's go ahead and call this metrics. Every metric that we're selecting will be metric. So we're just going to say metric. And let's just go ahead and here we're going to create one for sales, one for profit, profit margin. These don't have to be in any particular order. We'll uh, address that later. And then the latest one would be. Okay. Now, something's a little bit more interesting. Uh, in this particular circumstance is you need a measure by which you are going to apply this to, right? And so if we're basically taking a measure and we're saying that that measure now needs to, if it's selected, be changed to uh, the logic that we pulled here, we need a measure to start with. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new measure. Uh, I'm going to call this measure selected method. We're going to call this the sum of sales. So this is kind of like the default metric, but also um, will be replaced with the logic within the calculation group. So we have this selected measure. The next thing that we want to do, oh good, so we did that for us. Let's recreate that metrics. If you make changes to the data model, uh, like you just did, uh, or changes to the actual Power BI desktop um, file, it will erase what you did. Well, I need to update that in tabular editors, so, so we lost uh, all of those things. So let's recreate them. Again, uh, sales, profit, margin, 
We can do that exact same same thing last time. And quantity. Alright, once we have that, now we have to do basically if the selected if the uh, selected measure is the selected measure. So this is checking, you know, is the measure that we're selecting uh, that sum of sales that we have just created. And in this circumstance it is, I mean, this is kind of silly. We probably don't even need this uh, set this to sum of sales because it'll always be uh, the sum of uh, orders, um, sales here, uh, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and leave that, and then if that's not true, we want selected measure. Uh, again, that should default sales there. So let's go ahead and select that. So now we have this for sales. Now let's copy and paste. In this case, we need profit. Let's do quantity next. And for profit margin, here we actually want the sum of profit. divided by the sum of sales for profit margin. Okay, let's hit save. We'll hit refresh here. Let's see if this is actually working. Uh, so first thing I'm going to actually do is let's pull in the metrics. Put in this slicer. You can see that's actually not changing this because that's not the measure that we set. So we had the selected measure. Let's pull selected measure in here. You can see that we have sales and profit. So you'll see hopefully it change. If we select profit, you can see, oh, it changes everything. And this is actually something that happens with calculation groups. What's probably happening is the order of operations, it's it's applying them in the right wrong order. So if we pull calculation groups over here, uh, you can see that the time intelligence has a calculation group precedence of zero and the metrics has a precedence of one. Let's change that. Let's do one for time intelligence, zero for the metrics. And let's go ahead and hit save on that. Okay, now you can see it's actually pulling the profit when profit selected. When I select sales, now it's selecting sales. Let's talk about the ordering of these metrics here. One of the things you'll notice right away is, well, you probably don't want to have nothing selected. Uh, we could apply the default format, but we didn't. Uh, in this case, we always are going to have something selected. So let's go ahead and change the slicer selection to multi-select off and single select on. Um, let's say we wanted to order this to be sales, quantity, profit, and profit margin. If we wanted that to happen, we need to open up tabular editor again. And we have these ordinals again. The ordinals uh, are going to determine the order by which these things exist. And it goes top to bottom. So here I'm going to say five. That's going to set, I think sales went to three. So it'll always default by the number it takes to get to zero. So sales is three. Profit should be, quarter quantity should be two. Profit should be one. And profit margin should be zero. So we'll change profit to one. And profit margin. Let's change profit to Two. I think that'll knock it down to one. Yeah, two. I don't know exactly how that works. You have to sometimes enter the number higher than you want, and then it automatically puts it in the right order. Now there's this ordinal value, and the ordinal value, all it is, 
um, is a you're, you're applying an integer to a value. And that value is something you can sort by to the dashboard. So here uh, you'll see it hasn't been sorting yet. That's its metric. But if you go to metric, and you go to sort by, you go to ordinal. Uh, we're going to have to sort descending. Yeah, now we have sales, quantity, profit, and profit margin. So all we're doing is we're, we're uh, there's a hidden field here. If you go to the data model called ordinal. Uh, for both time intelligence and for uh, the metrics, that can be shown, and it's just it's just the value you put in there. Um, it's nothing special. It's just a, a field that that you enter in a calculation group that you can use for sorting purposes. Okay. Now let's go ahead and remove a profit here. Um, and total sales. So, so now we've got month to date, quarter to date, and year to date dynamically showing what we wanted for a sales quantity, profit, and profit margin. Uh, if you remember the design that I showed originally, that's pretty much everything we need with the exception of uh, a chart. Uh, so we went ahead and added a chart and we added this selected measure as the y axis, and you selected the Quarter date as the x axis. I go to the month level. We're going to be able to apply some data labels here. And let's just make them big enough so that we can see. And as we go through, you can see the numbers are changing and the formats changing. So it's a really clean way to apply uh, this kind of KPI selection. Um, after some formatting, you can end up with a dashboard that looks similar to this. I encourage you to come up with your own designs and, and your own functionality. You're able to go even deeper in calculation groups if you'd like. Uh, one of the things that we could have done that I didn't just for the sake of uh, keeping the challenge somewhat light uh, is I did not decide to look at year-over-year uh, -year comparisons, but that's something that you can easily do. Um, you can dynamically change what metrics are shown on a, a line here in addition to the bar chart. Uh, calculation groups are really versatile. I encourage you to really look in, into them and, and what they might be able to do for you. But that's it for this week's uh, Workout Wednesday. I uh, really appreciate those that uh, decided to uh, go through the challenge with us or, or watch this video. Um, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to us via our blog post or comment on the video below. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great week.